day eight of COP29, and it is the day that begins the ministerials, where now environment ministers from around the world pick up these discussions and pick up from where the technical teams left off on Friday and Saturday when they left this place way past midnight. Now, I should mention that the week did not end well for Africa particularly and even the countries in the developing world because some of the agenda items that Africa was keen on, such as finance, were not agreed on and the draft text did not have the, the, the limits that Africa was looking for, the commitments that Africa was looking for, or even a number that Africa was looking for. Africa was looking for $1.3 trillion. Without emission reduction, no amount of adaptation will be possible. And so this is a critical issue, and we are very glad that uh, on this particular subject, our minister from South Africa, together with a minister from Norway, will be co-leading the political discussions on this subject. But mitigation, important as it is, has always been a push to transfer responsibilities from developed to developing parties. And the challenge here is Whilst we have been taking up many, many, many targets every other year after every other COP, you recall in Dubai there was the commitment to, to transition away, of course, equitably and uh, uh, fairly from f fossil fuel uh, to um, renewables. There was a commitment to triple renewables, and there was a commitment to double renewables, and a number of other commitments relating to adaptation. The commissioner's support for all these targets have not been coming, and therefore, uh, Africa and many other constituencies from the G77 family have been uh, insisting that without commissioner's support to rhyme with the mitigation um, actions, we are not in the position to take additional mitigation action. And therefore, last night, uh, past midnight, this matter uh, was uh, unfortunately uh, not agreed and it was uh, pushed to the, the next meeting. And so that text moves on to ministers and it is hoped that the ministers can fix what the negotiators were not able to fix. I think ministers are coming supported by the technical and I want to appreciate the technical lead negotiators for the past two weeks on what they have done. I think the ministers come with a high, higher level of responsibility and political uh, goodwill from their capitals and therefore based on their nature of their offices I think they should be able to move the negotiations and get us to where we are, especially on climate finance. We can't be able to move really to Belém with nothing out of COP29. So yesterday, African ministers had their ministerial council now to appraise themselves on what has happened so far, what they expect this week, what the sticky points were, and where they get to start the conversation. And I should mention that the thing about these negotiations is that even though the ministers are bringing the political impetus to the table, the political will to the table, they really can't change the document much. Theirs is to discuss the document that's in front of them. So if this document left the negotiators' the negotiators tables without the numbers and without the community commitments, it it's unlikely that the ministers will be able to do to, to add anything in. It's unlikely that they'll be able to put these numbers in. It's unlikely that they'll be able to put these commitments in.